So the first thing uh, I want to do here is to create a kernel and I want that kernel to be aware of uh, the virtual environment of my specific uh, my spe specific uh, Python project. And there are ways, different ways of doing it, but the what I think is the most straightforward way is to install it as a dev dependency into the project and then create the kernel. You can create the kernel and then go in and edit the uh, the kernel specification, but, I, but I'm going to do it uh, like this. So I'm going to add the ipy kernel uh, dependency like this. So it's added to my dev dependency. So the next step is I want to create a kernel and this this uh, this procedure is a once you do this once per project so once you have added the kernel kernel specification it's there and you don't have to do any changes so what I'm going to do now is uh, run the ipy kernel command install and um, I want it to have a specific name up in this case I gave it the giving it the na same name as the actual Python project like this okay so maybe we can have a look at this uh, folder and what's in the contents I'm going to yeah I can do it like this um, so what we have here is a kernel.json and if we have a quick look in, in that one you can see that it has actually mapped out the virtual environment of this um, uh, of this project. Otherwise, it would be like the global Python uh, setting here. Great. So we are ready to start uh, a Jupyter kernel based on this uh, uh, specification, like this. So I'm running Jupyter kernel. And I'm specifying which of the kernels because I can have a lot of them uh, in installed. So I'm going to use this one that I just created. So now it's now we have a running kernel, and this kernel can be like uh, running for for like forever, as long as your uh, like uh, computer is on. It can be just running. So. The interesting part is how how can we connect to it and it's actually telling us how we can do that. So we use this, uh, there's a Jupyter client command and you can add an existing uh, kernel to it. So I'm going to copy this uh, and this path. So instead of do, running a, a client from the uh, terminal, I'm going to run it uh, from my Emacs editor where, where I have added those uh, uh, Jupyter uh, specific um, configuration and features. So I'm going to navigate to this project. You see I have a little, maybe I can just show you some example code over here. So now, now I have a, uh, my editor open with this uh, project and it uh, knows about the virtual environment I have already in the previous step I created it. so now I want to connect so I have this rdd-py connect to existing Jupyter kernel kernel so I'm going to uh, sorry <coughs> paste this uh, existing kernel uh, to connect to it like that so now uh, my, my Emacs editor or my shell that I have down here is connected to an existing kernel. But uh, this kernel is just uh, Python and uh, it's uh, Python with uh, the knowledge of the virtual environment and nothing else. So what I'm going to do now, I want to because I have like a fast API um, uh, app in, the, in this example project. And fast API uses, like, you know, by default, Unicorn and like several uh, processes and stuff. So I'm going to open it uh, in a, a special way using this little code snippet. So it will open in one, one single event loop because that's how the Jupyter, Jupyter kernel is running. It's running in a single event loop. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, uh, just tap control enter and this will this means that it's sending day, the, the row 
uh, to the re to the uh, to the um, to the to the shell, and the shell is connected to this kernel. So the kernel is is uh, uh, gets this uh, dependency now. So I'm going to continue adding stuff here. Did I? Uh, yes, great. Uh, so now I'm going to create a config. Oh, sorry, I forgot something. Um, blah blah blah. What did I forget? Oh, maybe I missed uh, a dependency. Okay, did I? Didn't I add it? Okay, like this, like that, like that, like that, and like that. Hope this works. Yes. So. Now I ha actually have my fast API app running. So what I'm going to do is to is try to access the uh, the swagger docs from for, for it. So this uh, this is my fast API started in in an event loop running in this uh, Jupyter kernel. So I have the, this is a really simple fast API app. It has a, like a create, read, update and delete uh, features. So if I'm going to just uh, add something, so I'm going to create a message called hello world, something like that. And then I also can, uh, I think I can read, I forgot to see what the actual message ID was, but I guess it was one. Let's, uh, let's uh, assume it was hello world. So, so I have like some, some data, persistent data storing, strings and, and storing it with a, with a, some sort of a unique ID. So this is where I think the interesting parts uh, start because my, my editor uh, is uh, like has this shell that is like aware of the, the running thing over here. So I can actually, if I go to this, uh, the code that is actually run uh, when I do the, these uh, these uh, swagger things or this open API specification things I think it's over here so I have this create read update and delete so if you remember how this message ID called one so I can let's say I want to try this uh, this row out so you know this is a variable <laughs> so I can I want to like populate it with something so I could just type something here Let's, let's say that it's, oh, oops, sorry, message ID one, and then I want to send it to my REPL. So my REPL is now aware of that message ID. So what this means is I should be able to select this uh, region and execute the code. So I'm doing that with control CC. That's how I mapped my, my uh, commands. So you can see that it has picked up the things from the database. This is just make, uh, taking a SQL alchemy, I think, or, or some uh, Python like uh, ORM and make it converts it to a dictionary. That's why we have this SA instance state. But you see that's the hello world and the ID. So let's say that I'm actually working here in the uh, doing something in parallel. So I'm going to update that um, message with ID and say like, uh, Good evening instead. So executing like, so now it's updated. So if I go back to my editor, or, oh, sorry, I should have had it selected and run it again. So it has updated. So this is like, um, without doing doing anything special, uh, the, the editor and the shell is aware of the state of, of this app. So I have like a DB connections and all of that stuff already prepared. So what I can also can do is I can, maybe I want to do some, some hacking over here and just to, to see what's, what, what is the data coming in here. So I'm going to store it in my temporary variable. I just want to do this to show you the possibilities. So I'm going to call it input and let it be the message ID. Like this so let's remove this to avoid any confusion so I'm going to uh, make the REPL aware of it I'm going to update the read function and then I'm going to run the read operation from the from the uh, app so my running app okay so now it's good evening as uh, expected so let's see if we have managed to store that data hopefully we have so I'm going to select my data 
the variable here. Oops, I maybe have done something wrong. Did I, didn't I press anything here? Okay, let's try it again. Okay, I, I must have miss, missed out on something. So, so uh, now uh, because I ran the read, read uh, operation from the browser, it uh, ended up into this read function and I have like manipulated it with it by setting uh, this uh, dictionary and like storing the variables. So let's say that I'm going to read uh, a message with ID2. Probably there's probably no, I'm not sure if I added a message with ID2, but it should still uh, populate this input before it tries to read it. Maybe it will just uh, fail now. Internal server error because I don't have any error handling. But I think we should be able to see that we wanted to pass in the input uh, value as two here. So this is what I did was I uh, added some some something here, uh, and I updated uh, the um, the function here, and that means that uh, the app also was updated because what when I do when I add things and change things and let the local REPL here or the shell here be aware of it, it actually is manipulating with the running kernel. So that's how these things uh, connect. So um, the Jupyter kernel has its limitations for if you use a lot of fast API, you have to start your dev fast API in a special way and running in a single event loop. But if you uh, run anything else that can uh, uh, run, uh, that is a single event loop like standard Python, you can do this setup without any like special uh, uh, special starting up uh, function. And it's, and it's not it's not a lot of code. It's just this uh, little code snippet over here. So I store these for for local. If I want to have this setup, I want to develop this. Uh, this uh, fast API app and I want to try things out. I want to change and edit and maybe uh, do something more than this uh, simple ID, passing ID. Maybe I want to do something with Pydantic. I want to check the validation. I want to store the data and do some testing and stuff like that. So so now everything is uh, connected without, without uh, uh, and connected and the uh, the app is updated sort of uh, live. So what's happened behind in the, the behind the scenes is that the Jupyter kernel state is updated. So I'm, when I'm when I do some changes in this uh, read function or maybe in this update function and send it to to the, to uh, to the shell, Jupyter will will actually replace the the read function that it has in store with this new function so what what the the code that i have developed uh, for emacs is that it will actually put this read function that i changed and send into the uh, right uh, namespace namespace path so that's how that's why things uh, work as uh, that's why things will be auto updated because the read will end up in the in the correct place like in the message api and the core module thank you for listening